This is the complete guide for balanced druids in phase two of Season of Discovery, including skills, stat priority, gear, rotation, runes, professions, consumables, literally everything you need to know. Let's get into it. First of all, let's have a look at what stat priority we're going to want to pursue. Now, as the raid bosses in Nomagon will be two levels above us, we are first and foremost going to want 5% hit to get that hit cap. Secondary then is going to be spell damage, specifically arcane and nature if we can get it. The third being spell crit chance, the fourth being intellect, and lastly MP5 and spirit for some extra mana. Not that I think mana is really going to be much of an issue for us in phase two, hence that being the lowest priority. Second up, we've got the skill books, and these are going to drop from mobs within the dungeons when we're leveling. Not many of these really matter to us balanced druids, however, I just want to show you what druids can get, just in case you want to get them, really. The first one does impact us, which is Deeper Wilds, decreasing the cost of our Mark of the Wild spell by 50%, and also increasing its duration, just making it a bit less tedious using it for our allies and a bit of a quality of life improvement. The second being revived to resurrect people, and thirdly enhanced restoration where your rejuvenation and regrowth spells can be active on targets affected by another druid's spells as well. Doesn't really affect us in balance though. Going on to Going on to gear then, both pre-biz and biz, going to start off with pre-biz and leveling gear. I am going to show you some options for both if you're leveling and haven't done the raid and if you have done the raid, because I feel like there's two different groups of people out there, people who are absolutely bizzed out like me or people who are just kind of questing and taking it a bit more casually. So starting off, like I said, with pre-biz, first up on the head, we're going to have Rakamar's Tattered Thinking Cap. This is from Lady Severus in BFD. And then if you haven't done the raid, this is a BOE world drop and you're going to want to get this with arcane damage on and it can go up to 27. So it could be quite expensive, but it is the only other option really that's viable um, that, you know, is best in slot for pre-raid. On the neck, it's the Jagged Bone Necklace from Twilight Lord Kelris. From dungeons also, you can get from High Inquisitor White Mane the Triune Amulet, which is this from the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. The Inquisitor's Shawl is just pretty much flat out the best. This is also from Scarlet Monastery, from High Inquisitor Fairbanks. Sergeant's Cloak I still think is fantastic for pre-biz, and this is from the PvP vendor in your capital city of Stormwind or Ogrimmar. Do check out my What to Do First at Level 25 guide if you don't know how to get this. Robe of the Magi is another BOE world drop that could be very expensive, but as you can see is very good. Otherwise, get something like the Dreamweave Vest, which is from Tailoring. Tailoring is a profession I advise that you get, by the way, if you weren't aware. So obviously a few of these items aren't from the previous raid. That's just because the items that you can get anyway, like this one from Tailoring, is better than that. However, if it is the best item, like on the headpiece, the best item was from the raid, then I'll show an alternative, just to clarify um, why I'm not showing it on some pieces, if that makes sense. Glowing leather bands then are from the raid from Lorgus Jet. Otherwise, get these First Sergeant's Dragonhide Arm Guards. I do believe these are the reward from the PvP in um, Stranglethorn Vale. Rod of the Ancient Sleepwalker is fantastic. It's from Twilight Lord Kelris. 4% drop rate though, so you may not even have this if you have been raiding. You'd have to get quite lucky. And therefore, the other item I would suggest is the Spellforce Rod, which drops off the Venture Co. Surveyors at about, about a 1% drop rate in Stranglethorn Vale. So it's not too difficult to farm this one. The next three items, Black Fingerless Gloves, Star Belt, and Med Red Mage Weave Pants are all just from Tailoring, pretty standard. Extra Planar Spider Silk Boots are from Tailoring. Again, if you watch my What to Do First Level 25 from Phase 1 video, I explain how to get these. They are fantastic. Lawkeeper's Ring is from PvP. Signet of the Twilight Lord is from Twilight Lord Kelris. Otherwise, you can get from the Blood Scalp Witch Doctors, again, a 1% um, drop rate from Stranglethorn Vale, the Voodoo Band, which isn't bad, Invoker's Void Pearl, and the Rune of Perfection. This is PvP. This is from Akame, Quest Reward at the end of BFD. There's not really much else to get, so these are the only real options. If you have already got this and you want to change your spec, you can spend 75 gold in STV at Booty Bay to actually... Um, change this from like the healing one to the DPS one, etc. And the mind expanding mushroom, which is from Lorgus Jet, is the best um, still. There's not really anything else we can get before raid. 
Going on to the biz then, at level 40, you've got the Neuro-Linked Arcano Filament Monocle, which is from Tailoring. Again, this will have a quest line at level 40 to do. Increases damage and healing done, MP5. And when you use it, you're going to reduce the cost of all your spells by 50% and also do a massive amount more damage for the next 12 seconds with your spells. Really, really good on that one. Piston Pendant is from Nomagon on the neck. Synthetic Mantle also. The Blood Rock Cloak is from Stranglethorn Veil vale PvP event. And it's going to be for two silver blood coins. So you are going to have to do PvP if you do want biz. Insulated Apron. This is a really interesting set we can get. This is leather. Um, by the way, do put 30 armor onto your cloak. Put plus two stats on your chest. These are the enchants you can get. So this is going to increase your chance to hit by 1%, getting you ever close to that 5% hit cap. We're also going to increase damage and healing done by up to 19. And the set piece, if you get all three of them, is going to further increase healing and, and damage and increase the crit chance of Wrath and Starfire by 2%. This is also on the legs and the boots, and that's how you get the whole set. Dryad's Wrist Bindings is by getting Exalted with the Warsong Outriders, um, which is obviously PvP grinding rep. The Glimmering Gizmo Blade, which is great, is um, from... From Nomagon, and then the Enchanted Sanguine Grimoire, which increases damage done by Arcane and Nature spells, is again from the PvP Blood Moon event. Dreamweave Gloves are from Tailoring. Volatile Concoction Belt, uh, again increasing your chance to hit by 1%. This is from Nomagon. Uh, again, the set pieces I've just shown you. The Hyper Gear Charged Gear of Conflagration. This is a unique equipped ring, and each class and spec can use, well, you can use all of them, but this is the one we choose. Increases MP5, damage and healing done, and gives you some nature and arcane resistance. And again, it's from Nomagun, and it's really good. It's unique equipped, so you can only have one of them. On your other ring, go for the Lawkeeper's Ring, still from PvP from Phase 1. The Miniaturized Combustion Chamber. Basically, what this does is it channels from between 1 to 150 health into mana, and that's on use. Uh, does it for 10 seconds on a 30-minute cooldown. The equip simply does increase damage. Invoker's Void Pearl, again, is still actually biz itself. And the Idol of Wrath, now from Nomagun, increases damage of a Wrath spell by up to 2%. Now let's look at the exciting bit, talents and runes. So at level 40, we're going to have 31 points to spend. First five points are going into improved Wrath, reducing the cast sum of our Wrath by 0.5%. Then we're going to put another 5 into improved Moonfire, increasing the damage and crit strike chance of Moonfire by 10%. We're going to put 2 into Nature's Reach. This increases the range by 20% of our spells. Then we've got a bit of a contentious issue. We've got 3 more points we need to spend to get down to Vengeance. Are we going to put it in improved Fawns, increasing the damage caused by your Fawns, or are we going to put it into Nature's Grasp? Especially while you're leveling, Nature's Grasp is the way to go. However, at level 40, I will leave that choice up to you. So we're going to put one into Nature's Grasp and another two into Improved. And what does this do? While active, any time an enemy strikes you, they have a 35% chance to become affected by Entangling Roots and therefore rooted in place. After that then, um, Improved is going to increase the chance of that happening. This means that when you're leveling, if a mob comes up and hits you, etc., it's going to give a chance to then get them in Entangled, where we can then move away and do more damage from afar without being in any danger. Moving on then, we're going to put 5 points into Vengeance, increasing the crit damage of our Starfire, Moonfire and Wrath, 3 of our core spells. We're going to put four points, because we don't have enough of five, into improved Starfire, reducing the cast time of it, and giving it a 12% chance to stun. Going down again, Nature's Grace. All spell criticals are going to give us this buff, reducing the cast time of our next spell by 0.5 seconds. Five points into Moon Fury, increasing the damage done by our Starfire, Moonfire, and Wrath. Big thumbs up for that one. And lastly, of course, Moonkin. Woohoo, we've made it. So you're going to go into a Moonkin form. Remember, when you do swap... In your forms, it's going to remove all movement impairing effects. This is fantastic for druids, of course. It's going to increase the contribution from armor by 360%. And ding, 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 we're actually going to give a party-wide buff of 3% um, spell crit chance to all of our party members when we are in Moonkin form. Fantastic. We can only cast balanced spells while we're in this form. However, not that matters anyway, because, you know, pretty obvious. And that's it. We're at level 40. <sighs> Now, which runes are we going to take? Okay, chest rune, it's going to be Fury of the Storm Rage, reducing mana cost of Wrath by 100%. Each time you deal damage of Wrath, you can get a free healing touch. We can't use that anyway, who cares? Leg rune, it's going to be Star Surge, um, which is basically a super duper spell. If you've watched my level 125 leveling guide, you can see that you should get this at level 1 if you can. It is fantastic, and up to like level 18, 19, 20, I think it was. 
um, it's a while ago, I've done it now, it's going to one-shot everything. And even like level 20, or like two-shot everything. It is so powerful and scales with your level. Amazing. It also triggers most from most talents and effects that trigger or um, benefit from Wrath and Starfire, which is even better. Hand Rune, then, it's going to be Sunfire, which is a damage over time spell we're going to be using in our rotation. The Waste Rune, then, it's going to be Eclipse. And on the foot, it's going to be Dream State. Dream State means that your damaging spell crits grant you 50% of your mana regen while casting and increase nature damage dealt. And again, this is why I don't think mana is going to be that important for us this um, season, um, in phase two of Season of Discovery, specifically because of this and just kind of, you know, the way that Fury of the Storm Rage paired with it. I, I really think we're going to be fine. Eclipse then increases the crit strike of your next two wraps by 30%. Wrath increases the crit strike of your next Starfire by 30%. And both of these effects stack up to four charges. Both spells gain 70% chance at all times to not lose casting time when you take damage, which is fantastic. Because of that, then, it's really kind of quite self-explanatory or quite obvious why we're taking those runes. Moving on to consumables, then. Alchemy could be another really good profession, especially if you don't have a ton of gold. Greater mana potions are going to be the best mana potion we can use, and you can get these off the auction house. For food, it's going to be the Sagefish Delight, which is going to give you six mana per five seconds um for 15 minutes if you really don't need any mana at all then the other food you can get is a spider sausage now <laughs> that's so ridiculous so the where the where where we're going to get this spider sausage do you ask well dust wallow marsh when you go in from the barrens just go north and there's loads of spiders near that northern cave i can't remember what it's called and basically there's loads of spiders around there kill them it's about a 40 percent chance i was farming them um a few days ago just to see um what the drop chance was and they are level, level 36 ish i was doing this on on wattle just so i could you know get ahead for you guys it's about a 40 percent drop chance they, the, the white spider meat drops very regularly and that's going to give you 12 stamina and spirit all this information just like lives rent free in my head it's actually insane Insane. I don't know how I, how I just keep all this in here. Um, so it's up to you, depending on which food you think is going to be better for that. Lesser Arcane Elixir, again from Alchemy, increasing your spell damage by up to 14 for 13, 30 minutes. Um, it's going to be your potion. Um, and then actually on like professions, again, tailoring because of that headpiece that's amazing. And also the extra planar boots that you may have from phase one being pre-biz. Um, enchanting is a really, really good other one if you're not taking alchemy. Enchanting gives you this, the uh, Sigil Innovation, empowering you to deal up to 20 increased damage and healing the spells um, by 20 for 30 minutes, um, which is really, really fantastic. I don't think this persists through death, though, and you can see it does stack, and it is on a 30-minute uh, 30 cooldown, meaning I think, just like with the, the, the world buff, if you die, you are going to have to wait for that cooldown, I believe, to use it again. Otherwise, take Alchemy, because you also get the Mildly Irradiated Rejuvenation Potion, which is going to restore mana and health and increase attack and um, attack power and spell damage by 35 for 15 seconds on a two-minute cooldown, which is fantastic as a potion as well. Let's see how it all comes together then, and what are we going to do with our rotation in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery. So it's really quite straightforward. We're not going to be using many spells at all. If you see up here, number one slash five on Star Surge, that means that this is the step in the rotation. Feel, to take, feel free to pause and take a screenshot of sector of this rotation. So number one is Star Surge. Use it on cooldown. It's the best, okay? Number two, Moonfire. And number three, Sunfire, because these are our damage over time spells. And we want to keep these up on our targets at all time, ticking away and doing that damage. At number four is going to be Wrath. And this is more of like a filler spell. Remember our Eclipse rune. I'll go over again. again. I'll go over that again in a second, just to recap. Um, so number four, we're going to go Wrath. We're going to go back up to number five, so like to number one for Star Surge. So Star Surge, Moonfire, Sunfire, Wrath. Star Surge again, then Wrath again, then Starfire, and then Wrath. So it's eight steps. And then you're going to continually rotate these eight steps. What I would recommend to do is just put them on number eight, one to eight um, on, on your action bar and you'll never get confused. Um, I know it's quite straightforward anyway, but you know, not every, some, we're all at different skill levels. Um, but this is it. Really fun rotation. I am so excited to get into Gnomagon. I think I'm going to main my druid this season. Um, I was maining my priest uh, in phase one. Let me know in the comments below what you are maining. Just to recap again then on Eclipse, Starfire increases the critical strike chance of your next two rafts by 30%. So remember, Starfire increases crit of next two rafts. Wrath increases the crit strike of your next Starfire. Both effects stack. The end, okay? And that's how that fits into the rotation. And that is it, guys. That is how we're going to play Balanced Druid in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery. I am so excited. 
Either way, if you guys have any questions at all, rotation, class, UI, add-ons, you name it, please do join my Discord where we have a really knowledgeable community of now over 2,000 people. You want to go one step further, join my YouTube membership below or join my Patreon where you can then open VIP tickets in my Discord and I can help you with literally simming and analyzing your logs. I'll literally help you set up your UI in one-to-one -one in a private space, etc. I'll do anything you need for that, etc. I do now also stream Season of Discovery over on Twitch. It's Twitch slash Heavy Heels, same as my YouTube handle. And there is a link down below in the description for that. Can't wait to see you guys in Azeroth for phase two of Season of Discovery. And do join my Discord also if you'd like to level, dungeon or raid with me because I'm always looking for more friends to do that with.